Tyson Steel. Alaska is one of the frostiest places on Earth. In 2003, its temperature dropped over minus 73.8 Celsius, becoming the chilliest place. Residents mostly migrate from Alaska to different areas in the winter due to its bone-chilling weather. People who challenge themselves to live in this chilly weather have risked their lives or have learned unforgettable lessons. Tyson Steele, 30, loved living outdoors, especially in the wild. He constantly desired to enjoy nature in its serenity. In 2019, he purchased a small cabin and was residing in Sestina Valley, Alaska with his Labrador dog, Phil. Sestina is a remote place miles away from the nearest settlement. Tyson knew the cruel weather of Sestina Valley was beyond what one could imagine. He was always prepared for the unbelievable. He would mostly stock the cabin with plenty of food, supplies, and warm clothes. He was around 20 miles away from his closest neighbor and was living in a plastic-covered hut. Tyson loved his dwelling. He grew a jalapeno plant inside his shelter and had warm blankets and sleeping bags for himself and his dog. He would contact his family once every two weeks to assure them that he was doing well. He had a cell phone that had a battery issue and took a lot of time to charge. But he didn't care much about it because he didn't use it apart from calling his family for a couple of minutes. Then one night, disaster struck. On the 17th of December, 2019, Tyson went inside the hut to sleep with his dog but found it very cold. He grabbed a large piece of cardboard and put it on the stove. He knew it was dangerous, but he was too sleepy to ponder it. After that, he covered himself and his dog in a sleeping bag and slept. Later that night, the aflame ash from the cardboard went up the chimney and landed on the roof of his hut. The fire began to burn everything that was inside the hut. Tyson didn't realize it until he woke up in the night to the sound of flames of molten plastic dripping all over the room. The plastic was dripping through the roof above him. He realized he didn't have much time to think, so he quickly rushed out to toss snow on the fire. But he couldn't do anything seeing that the whole cabin was ablaze. Suddenly, he thought of his dog and ran inside the burning cabin and yelled, Phil! And also started gathering his blankets, sleeping bags, warm clothes, rifle, and anything that came to sight. He kept yelling, Phil! Who was still inside the burning shelter. He saw Phil jumping off the bed and trying to find a way to get out of the cabin. Suddenly, Phil disappeared. Maybe he was finding another way to get outside, but then Tyson heard a painful howl from inside. Tyson started yelling. He didn't know how to bring Phil out. He tried several times to go and rescue Phil, but there wasn't any way he could enter. Phil wasn't responding anymore. He caught fire and succumbed to death. Tyson was sitting outside the burning hut with tears in his eyes. He didn't know what to do. The sorrow kept increasing, and the feeling of his dog's pain quenched his heart. He cried a lot until the cumulative blaze took his attention. He lost his ammunition, phone, and everything he needed to stay alive in a bittery cold area. He tried his best to put out the fire but failed as it swallowed everything that came in its way. Mourning his dog, he stood up in exhaustion and looked around. He decided to gather all the stock once dawn arrived. He sat down on the snow and looked at his hut he built with great love, but today he lost everything. In the morning, he collected a few cans of food that had beans and peanut butter. He realized that food in the tin was half-cooked on fire and had filthy smoke, but he had to consume it to survive. The rest of the cans popped open due to a massive fire in the hut, and that the food was not consumable anymore. The food was very little to survive on, so he decided to consume only two cans a day for a month. The next task was to find shelter because he knew that as soon as it got dark, he would be unable to survive the chill. His wood stove was still operable, and though he hated it, he knew it would help him fight the harsh Alaska nights. He then searched for tarpaulins and wooden logs to build a shelter that would allow him to stay alive as long as possible. Tyson wanted to contact his neighbor, but they were miles away. He was wearing burned winter shoes, and walking in them could cause trouble especially when he had to walk through the forest. He sat there wondering that his family wouldn't contact him for the next two weeks and he wouldn't be able to get any help. So he decided to carve a large SOS sign in the snow near his new camp. He stamped the snow and then dusted it with ash from the fire, making the sign more visible. Those three weeks were the hardest of his life. It snowed heavily on those days and his shelter was not enough to provide warmth. He had to walk miles in the forest and bring logs to keep his hut warm. 
The canned food was gradually getting rotten due to being half-cooked in the fire, so he had to throw out many cans. After the second week, he became weak and had snow bites on his entire body. The pain was unbearable, but he couldn't do anything about it. He couldn't sleep at night thinking about the horror he had experienced that day. Phil's howls kept him awake and sad. He regretted being so lazy. He despised and blamed himself for Phil's death. Suddenly, life became so miserable. He anxiously waited for help, but gradually his hope of getting rescued was dying. His health was constantly deteriorating. After two weeks, his family and friends tried to contact him, but his phone went off. In the beginning, they thought his battery may have gone off, but the family became more concerned as the days passed. They notified the authorities and shared his location. The third week ended. Tyson was shivering and starving in the chilly cold weather. He looked around in great distress, thinking no one had come to rescue him. He was feeling very weak with low energy and didn't have much to eat. A thought just came across his mind. Will I die here? He knew he had bravely spent the most difficult days of his life, but now he began to feel mentally and physically ill. He kept sitting there, thinking he had never gotten to say goodbye to his family and friends. Would they ever be able to find out what happened to me? Loneliness and hunger were gradually taking away his hope of life. Suddenly, he heard a sound coming from very far away. He looked around and realized it was a chopper. He ran outside where he had drew a huge SOS. The rescue team was trying to locate Tyson when they saw a giant SOS written in snow. A man dressed in a black jacket came out of his hut. His face was covered with warm clothes. Tyson stood there quietly with raised arms. He had no energy to call for help. The rescue team was shocked to see a guy with long blonde hair and a beard covered with snow. He looked weak and pale, with dark circles under his eyes, but he was still smiling. The rescue team took him to the nearest hospital, but according to the doctors, he was doing well. He had no physical injuries, but was suffering from emotional trauma and frostbites. The first thing he did after getting rescued was he took a hot shower and a well-deserved McDonald's combo meal. After getting discharged from the hospital, he went to his family's house in Utah to recover. He said, my family has a dog and I wanted to see him first. They've got a dog, he said, and that would be some therapy. The story of Steele surviving in the harsh climate of Alaska winter alone in the wilderness has spread throughout the country. Tyson said he would return to Alaska and rebuild his cabin again. Undoubtedly, he's a brave guy, and hardships didn't affect him much. That's a wrap for today. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up, share, and subscribe to the channel to see our latest content.